Hello guys, welcome back to Crazy TV. Today we're discussing one of the most mysterious missing persons case from South Korea. Is it a missing persons case or the perfect murder plot? Is that even possible to perfectly cover up a murder? A pregnant woman is seen going inside of a hotel but never coming out. She's been missing for over 20 years now and a strange suspect that confessed to the murder but he was never charged. I would love to discuss this case with you guys and talk about the strange like of this suspect. What might have happened here and how did he get away with it if he did? And how we can possibly protect ourselves from the people that we trust the most. Talking about protection, I know back in 2004 when this case happened, it was a bit of a different world. Now in 2024, in this generation we live in, we live most of our lives online. Go to google.com and search up your name, your email address, and you might be surprised that your data and sensitive information is being sold by the data brokers without your knowledge. And to protect myself, this is why I've been using Aura for the last two years, who has been the supporter and sponsor of Crazy TV for a long time now. Aura shows you which data brokers are selling your sensitive information and you get to opt out of it. One of the reasons why you can get a lot of spam mail, bank information being leaked online. Aura can help clean all of this up so that you stay safe online. I don't know if you guys know, but AT&T customers, which I am, over 73 million customers records of AT&T has been leaked to the dark web. Those who's been affected, they recommend that you use strong password, monitor your account activity, consider credit freezes, and fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Without having to download multiple apps, you can do this all from Aura. They're also a VPN service, so you get VPN as well, all for a low price. So I value my privacy and I value yours, so go to aura.com slash crazy TV where you can get free two weeks trial, so you could get checked for free if your information has been leaked online. Just by you guys checking out the sponsors is a big help to continue Crazy TV. Thank you to Aura and let's get back to the case. So this is Miss Kim and back in 1998 when she was about 31, 32 years old, she would go on to meet a man named Mr. Nam. Mr. Nam was a CEO of a venture capital company that he had founded and he was also known to have gone to a prestigious school university in South Korea. So this man seemed very intelligent when to grade school. He was a CEO of his own company and Miss Kim really fell head over heels for him. Miss Kim at the time when she met Mr. Nam, she was actually divorced and was looking for a new love. I'm unsure at what point, but during the stages of when they were dating, she found out that Mr. Nam was actually married with two daughters himself. According to the family and friends, she did try to break it off a couple times, but by the time that she found out that he was married, she already or the two already had some kind of a bond and she decided to continue the relationship as I guess a mistress even knowing that he was married. Of course it wasn't her fault only, it was definitely also Mr. Nam's fault going out and getting another girlfriend or a mistress while he was married and not being honest with his family. And I guess this relationship, a secret relationship, continued on for seven years years. And I'm not sure if this part has been confirmed or not, but it is rumored that she actually had been pregnant two times before where she had to actually, you know, dismiss the pregnancy. And this part is going to be a very important information for later on. Now, fast forward to April 8th, 2004. Again, seven years passed since they've been in the secret relationship. And that was the last time Miss Kim would talk to her family. Now, early 2004 now, Miss Kim was going through something really, really confusing in her life and she told nobody, not even her family and friends of her plans to actually move out of South Korea. The only person that she told was a priest that she would let out the secret to before she decided to move. Now the priest claims that Miss Kim came to him and it seemed like she had a lot of things in her head that she had to decide and also confess that she was five months pregnant with of course Mr. Nam's child, which would make it her third technical pregnancy with this person. She even was living in Seoul in an apartment where he would frequently come by and the two would kind of like live together as well. I'm not sure where his actually family was living, but this apartment was used so both of them could stay and have this relationship. 
We technically don't know exactly what happened between the two from here because again, she never told anybody about the details of what was going on. But as she became pregnant the third time, we believe that as she told this to Mr. Nam, she decided that she wanted to keep this child this time. Now it could be, again, we're assuming, but after seven years, you know, she was kind of like tired. Maybe she wanted a real, real relationship and a family with Mr. Nam, something that she probably had been asking, you know, coming from a woman, I know what she might have thought. She definitely eventually wanted a full family and a life with Mr. Nam, something that he wouldn't give her. And maybe it's that Mr. Nam tried to convince her the third time, like, hey, like, no, I don't want to keep this child. But Miss Kim insisted that she did, and she decided to go farther with this pregnancy. But this is when we do know that Mr. Nam came up with a plan. Now he said, okay, we will keep the child and I will tell my wife that I want a divorce, but we're gonna have to run away to China. So he came up with this plan that they were going to be living together and become a family, but they had to again flee to China because he was stressed with his work as being the CEO of this venture capital company, he claimed and alleged that he was gonna take the money from the company. And because obviously this was illegal and very risky and also asking for a divorce or maybe just leaving the family without even telling Telling them and being honest with them, they had to make even a fake passport to flee to China. And this is a very classic story that we hear where a lot of the times, you know, when the mistress and the woman is involved, now the man says, okay, like I'm gonna leave my family, I'm gonna leave my wife and kids of, you know, 10 plus years and come to you. But for, you know, obviously, whatever reason it was, Miss Kim was actually down to move and literally flee to China with a fake passport or a name and start this new life with her lover. Eventually, we even know that there was a ticket on May 7th, 2004 for them to fly out to China. It seems like this plan took a couple months because we do know that in the beginning of 2004, that is when she actually sold the apartment and sold the car that she was driving in order to prepare for this. And finally, May 7th, the day that she was supposed to fly out and start a new life came. But just before that, she actually had four big suitcases that she packed in order for it to be packed to China. Now, Mr. Nam said, hey, give me your belongings, your four luggages, and I'm going to ship this to China first because it's obviously a lot of stuff. And the plan was that Miss Kim was going to China first and settle there with a broker that he found, Mr. Nam found, to take care of her while he gets his money situations and company situations and family situations all figured out and come to her after. The day before she was to fly out, Mr. Nam books a really expensive $500 a night luxury hotel for Miss Kim and himself to spend the night together before she flies out. This was back in 2004, $500 a night. We're talking about probably like a five-star hotel, which is interesting because Mr. Nam claims that, hey, I mean like, yeah, she's gonna fly out and she's also not gonna be in Korea soon. You know, technically what they're doing is really out of the moral boundaries that they're doing and especially a little bit illegal to take fake passports and take his money from this company. So he said that, yeah, we might not see each other for a couple months and stuff like that so she he really wants to treat her to a nice staycation in Seoul which is interesting because people point out that she was staying in Seoul and he got a hotel in Seoul so it's like a staycation kind of thing before she flies out I mean is that a normal thing? I mean, he is a CEO and he does kind of have the money for this, but because at the hotel, this is when the timeline gets really odd. May 6th, the day before she's supposed to fly out again, she is seen checking into this luxury hotel. Then it is reported at 1 a.m. The staff remembers that in front of Miss Kim's room, there was a puddle of water, a pool of water kind of leaking out from the hotel room. They don't know what this was all about, but the next day, in the morning at 10 a.m., Miss Kim was actually seen going to the hair salon downstairs from the hotel. It is also recorded that one of her friends did receive a call from Miss Kim, so she was totally fine. Now, what was this water thing about? Nobody knows. Then Miss Kim is seen going to a cell phone shop in order to terminate her phone, her Korean phone number, because she no longer will need it anymore. So from that day on, technically May 7th, she had no way of contacting people. At 1 p.m. May 7th, Miss Kim returns to the hotel and is never seen 
again. Her flight was supposed to be at 9 p.m., but she was never recorded with her actual passport and any other potential fake name passport of leaving the country, which is the crazy part because she is seen, recorded seen going into the hotel, but never seen coming out. The interesting thing is, again, they were supposed to check out on May 7th, but somebody requested for a late checkout. Then later on, Mr. Na was recorded to request for one more night stay and he paid for it. Next day on May 8th, when the hotel room was supposed to be completely checked out, the staff members, I mean the housekeeping, went inside of the room and they claimed to have seen a bizarre scene. Now, unfortunately, because at the moment they did not know that this was a crime scene, the housekeeping actually ended up cleaning it up. So these photos are a reenactment, but it is exact to what the housekeeping and the staff members remember from the scene. The staff says as soon as they walked in, they also saw a puddle of water inside of the bathroom and especially leaking out to the living room area. They also found that all of the toilet papers were used. There was multiple towels inside of the bathtub, water everywhere, even footprints, especially male footprints. And you know those hotel gowns, that was also soaking wet inside of the tub. They also remember a couple of customers complaining to the front desk that there was a loud music and even TV sound that was coming out from that room. Now there is more evidence and details to this case. So on May 7th, when Miss Kim returned after turning off her phone and things like that, she was not alone. She was seen on CCTV footage with Mr. Nam coming inside. Then around 2 p.m., so around one hour since the two came back in, the housekeeping remembers trying to go into the room and ask for, again, housekeeping to clean up the room. But Mr. Nam came out and refused the housekeeping service and put the do not disturb sign in front of their room. The unfortunate thing is the CCTV footages only some exist and some don't because they only were able to get the police involved 45 days after she went missing. Saying. So back in 2004, especially with like storage and things like that, they did not keep any of the footages, I believe, longer than maybe a week or even 30 days. Now, the crazy thing is, I told you guys, the families and friends of Miss Kim had no idea that she was even plotting this to flee to China. They only found this out after they were like, where is my daughter? Where is my friend? Like she's pregnant and, and she's nowhere to be found. Now there were possible clues left by Miss Kim. Now was this an evidence that she was still alive somewhere? You guys be the judge. But there was a letter from Miss Kim on the 24th, May 24th. So technically after she was supposed to fly out to China where she sent a letter to her sister claiming that she was supposed to move and she was in this like relationship with this person and she was going to get her life figured out. But when tracking this letter they found out that actually miss kim sent this before she was supposed to fly out to china she requested to the post office saying that hey i'm gonna be overseas for a while can you send this at a specific timing after she left so this letter was by miss kim but not after she left the sister also claims that around the same time she received a phone call from somebody that claimed to be allegedly a broker in China claiming that, hey, your sister has arrived in China safely. She can't really get on the phone right now, but I'm just letting you know, like she told me to tell you guys. There was no other details about Miss Kim and they assumed that she was alive all this time. Without solid proof and evidence and especially phones back then, they had no idea where she was and how to get a hold of her. And Miss Kim even handed the priest a card, a business card of Mr. Nam and told the priest, hey, this is the guy I'm going to be running away with if anything happens to me or whatever, like, here's the card. So the priest was the key to finding out who her lover was. And obviously when the family called this number, it turned out to be the CEO, Mr. Nam. And from here, his story just gets crazy. Mr. Nam would change his story about what happened to Miss Kim multiple times. When Mr. Nam was taken to the police interrogation, at first he claimed that, yeah, like, you know, she called me in China, that she was there. I don't really remember the conversation, but I think she arrived. Then he said, oh, like, yeah, I'm talking to this Chinese broker. Like I sent this person faxes and phones and we figured everything out, but I think she was scammed. Uh, something happened to her in China and the brokers like took her and did something. When police looked in into his phone records, any, any business records, there was zero facts or any connections to any Chinese broker that he was claiming about. Then it's like, well, if your plan was to go to China and follow your mistress, pregnant mistress, 
Why haven't you gone yet? Like, where is your ticket? Eventually, after multiple rounds of this, he then confessed randomly to her murder. The problem was he did confess, but said, oh, well, I took the body, I put her on my shoulder and just came out of the hotel. Then another story was, yeah, I strangled her and then I, you know, took her apart into pieces, put her into the luggage and I rolled it out of the hotel and I threw it somewhere in the Han River. Then he said that, well, it was under the bridge. Well, it was there and there. Like it, he changed his story so many times to the point that the police could not use any of this as evidence. And they did go to all of the locations that he claimed that he disposed of her body and could not find her. Another damning evidence is that when police tracked that four luggage that Mr. Nam claimed that he was going to send it over to China, they actually found it in a storage house somewhere in South Korea. And the man who owns the storage house says that, yeah, like I clearly remember Mr. Nam coming in and all he said was like, hey, can you please give me a cheap price? These are the four luggages that I'm going to keep here. Uh, why didn't you send it to China? Why are you keeping it at a random storage house? What? Now, after a couple months not being able to get answers and being pretty sure that Miss Kim never left Korea and that she could have been murdered, they did a forensic testing at the hotel room, Mr. Nam's house, that apartment that the two lived together, the cars, but they did not find anything. And this is because, again, this happened months after incident. They could have done something faster, but it was because of Mr. Nam who had prolonged this case, promising the family, yeah, give me some time, give me a couple weeks to try and get in contact with the Chinese broker, like she is alive, she's okay. And it just ended up being months after that. And obviously in terms of the hotel, the five-star hotel, they've gone through multiple rounds of different customers, they cleaned it up and things like that. And they found zero evidence that Miss Kim was even murdered or that her body was out there somewhere. Now, eventually in South Korea, I guess they don't have a law where if you lie to the police, like especially when it comes to murder cases, you could be charged because he was never charged. They found zero physical evidence that Mr. Na was directly related to Miss Kim's disappearance or murder. The only thing he was actually charged for and that the police could charge him for was the fact that he used Miss Kim's money while she disappeared. So remember I told you guys that in the beginning when they were plotting to move to China, Miss Kim like sold her apartment and her car and that mounted up to be about $30,000. And Mr. Kim who was supposed to be a CEO of his own company and stuff used that money and I believe they charged him with theft. That's the only thing that they could charge him for until they can find anything else. Why would you even use somebody else's money like that? Especially like if she's in China, don't you think the new baby, your new baby and her being there would need that money. The next bizarre thing is that a Korean documentary crew was able to actually get an interview with Mr. Na back in 2017, but still like 13 years after she's gone missing. And the producer goes, so what happened that night? What were you thinking about? And he flat out goes, just ask me what you want. Quote, just ask me directly. You want to know if I killed her or kept her alive, isn't it? Kept her alive? like. What? Then he goes on to claim that, yeah, he did have a Chinese broker. You know, he believes that she arrived in China. And the producer's like, well, if you received a call phone call from her, don't you think that you will remember this? Uh, I don't really remember, but I do remember being, feeling safe knowing that she arrived. How do you not remember such an important phone call? Even if it was 13 years ago, the fact that you know that somebody, quote unquote, you cared about and was pregnant with your child, is missing and you haven't seen her in 13 years, don't you think like you would remember stuff like that? Now, I forgot to mention that one of the reasons why he was acquitted and never charged with any murder and things like that is because later he claimed that he actually falsely confessed to the police because they made him and that he basically felt very pressured by the police, which is one of the reasons why he just made up with like tons of different stories to what happened to her. Now, when asked about this, why he lied to the police, like he never answered the question but start to talk about different things and it just went into this like weird mountain. Professionals who have seen the tape of Mr. Nam's interview claim that it is incredibly odd the way he's acting because it seems like he has a very great sharp memory on some of the stuff that do serve him and some of the tough questions about relating to Miss Kim like he just magically can't remember. It's like cherry picking what he wants to remember. To me he is incredibly suspicious but it's kind of 
interesting how he decided to come on national TV to give this interview. He also pointed out, well, hey, like there was a sign that she was alive. Remember that letter? Was the reason why he brought up the letter to the documentary crew was that because he knew and maybe even instructed her to write the letter back then in order to have this perfect plan. The sister also claims that she does remember the voice of that Chinese broker that called her and it was a very husky, like a particular voice. And the documentary crew actually brought on a similar voice to the ones that she got a call from and it turned out to be Mr. Nam's uncle. Now this can't be 100% proven if it was the same person because we don't have the recording of the original tapes of the person that she received the call from, but she claims, wow, this is the same tone of voice, same husky voice, and the same type of accent that this man had. Unfortunately, Mr. Nam's uncle, the Chinese broker, um, he apparently has some Alzheimer issues, so he claims that he doesn't remember anything back then. Mr. Nam actually also has an interesting history. Now, back four years since Miss Kim went missing, so back in 2000, there was a case when Mr. Nam was driving with his stepmother. He claims that he was pushing on the XL. He was going about 130 kilometers because he was late somewhere with his stepmother and that he pressed the brake two times really hard. And because he was going so fast, it could have caused like a really harsh stop motion. And when he arrived at this destination where wherever they were going, looked back and saw that his stepmother was dead. So they rushed her to the hospital and the autopsy doesn't lie. And apparently she got a fracture in one of her spines, which was the cause of her passing. But professionals say that there's no way just because you pull the brakes really hard, your spine is going to break. But at the same time, the stepmother, maybe she was maybe in her 60s, 70s, maybe above that. But according to the professionals, in order for your spine to break like the way she did, it had to be a hard physical blow. But because there was no CCTV footage or again, physical evidence that Mr. Nam was the one who physically did this to her, he was acquitted and he was never charged for the murder or manslaughter or any responsibility of the death of his stepmother. So could it be that Mr. Nam, knowing that he did this once, that he was able to get away with it due to lack of evidence, he knew exactly how to get out of a murder. There are so many more questions such as like on May 6th, the night of May 6th, or technically 1 a.m. May 7th, what was the pool of water that was leaking out of the hotel? I mean, Miss Kim was seen the next day cutting her hair like nothing went wrong. So technically she knew what was going on inside of her hotel room. I mean, were they doing some kind of weird ritual or like was she cleaning up something like i we have no idea some people even theorize that maybe they were deciding to you know end together but the fact that they had a plane ticket the fact that that she told the priest that she was looking forward to moving to china also packing her stuff to china this all leads to the fact that she wasn't planning to her life. Is Mr. Nam a pathological liar as he was seen and recorded to have changed the story multiple numerous times? I mean, the fact that he graduated from a prestigious university, and the fact that he is a CEO of his own company, it's like, damn, is he a genius or a psychopath? A successful psychopathic liar? How can there even be zero evidence? The fact that you ended a life, potentially ended a life, and you carrying out a body and nobody claimed it was suspicious. At the same time, it is so usual, obviously, to carry out luggages from the hotel. So maybe like her body was in there and nobody suspected anything. One popular theory that people believe happened was that when Miss Kim decided to put her foot down and say that, hey, I want a relationship with you, I am pregnant, like I want you to be the father, Mr. Nam could not convince her otherwise. And he decided that he did not want to maybe face the rumors that the CEO just got another woman pregnant and he has been cheating for seven years. And the fact that he just never wanted to leave his actual wife and kids. And the plan that he thought of was to get rid of his mistress and his unborn child. Let me know what you guys have thought about today's case and what you think has happened. And could we find what happened to Miss Kim 20 years later? Thank you so much to Ara for being today's supporter. Leave a comment down below and see you guys in my next case. Peace.